Alright, here we go. Mario Johnson, aka Chocolate. Happy to have you on the platform, my man. Pleasure, man. Most deaf. Pleasure. Yeah, man. So, you know, the people might know you from, you know, your connection with Vanilla Ice and, you know, you being Vanilla Ice Ghostwriter and, you know, your connection to Vanilla Ice, you know, and the incident he had with Suge Knight. But before we get into all that, man, just let the people know a little bit about your resume, my man. Oh, wow, man. Um, Starting from Vanilla Ice, um, work with Snoop. Um, I'll go as far as back as Ice-T, South Central Cartel, um, Spice One, um, well, it goes forever, Booyah Tribe. Recently, uh, Eminem, got a new record with Eminem. Um, ooh, Dr. Dre, uh, did Talking To My Diary, me and DJ Silk produced Talking To My Diary, the main song for uh, Straight Outta Compton. Um, it goes forever, man. I work with the whole West Coast. I've got work with. You know, I've worked with, you know, Houston artists, um, Paul Wall, um, tons of people. I've got songs with a lot of people. E-40, Daz, Cor well, Corrupt, never Daz, but I got a record with, um, actually, yeah, Daz got a record with, uh, I'll be forgetting, man. I got, I got records, it goes far, bro. Long ways. Yeah, man, that resume impressive, man. And if I'm not mistaken, you from Cali, right? Where part of Cali you from? From Cali, but I'm from Pomona, P-Town, Pomona, California, the home of me above the law, sugar free. Right. So you being from Cali, and if I'm not mistaken, Vanilla Ice, he from Dallas. How did that come about, man? You and Vanilla Ice meeting. How did y'all meet for the first time? We met because I moved to uh, Texas with my dad. He owned the business there, so I went to go help my dad on his family business, on a business, and um, met him on the club scene. You know, hanging out in clubs. I was a rapper producing and. We're trying to produce at that time, and we connected in the, in the nightclub that is a manager on Tommy Kwan. So you first met Vanilla Ice in Dallas. What was he doing at that point when you first met him? Was he rapping at that point or no? Because I heard he was riding dirt bikes. When you first met him, was he riding dirt bikes? Because I heard at some point he was like the dirt bike champion at some point or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but he wasn't doing that when I met him. He was already, career was already moving on that, but he wasn't dirt biking when I, when I met him. It was a little bit after that. I met him after his dirt bike career. He was strictly about dancing and hip hop. Period. But he did, he did, he did used to dirt bike. You go to his apartment, his whole entire living room was all trophies and posters of him all over the walls. So he did have that career as a, as a dirt biker. Right, so is it true that Vanilla Ice, he grew up in the hood? Because at one point, he said he was from the hood. So when you first met him, was he in the hood? Hell no. He, he wasn't from the hood. He he lived in, um, I think, like Garland. He ain't from the hood. I, that's, I never known him to be from the hood. Never. And he also said that he went to high school with Uncle Luke. But if I'm not mistaken, Uncle Luke, he from Miami and Vanilla Ice, he from Dallas. So that don't add up, man. Oh, uh, man, look, I'm telling you. I'm just going to keep it 100. He lies so much that he be believing them lies. I'm telling you facts. He lies so much. He's a liar, bro. He, he, he lies. Like, every song I did on that album, he credited himself. He said he wrote Ice Ice Baby at 16. He didn't write no parts of that song. And he really believe it. So imagine that. Wow. So every song on that album you wrote, you was the writer behind all that? I wrote nine. I wrote nine on the album. See, the, 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 whole, the whole problems that came about that record was people think that we had a problem with Ice Ice Baby. We didn't. Ice Ice Baby was already in the can, paperwork done. We had a problem that when the record came out, I was sent to Texas to go work with him on the album. I did nine songs, he was supposed to pick five that I was getting paid for, but he ended up putting all nine on the album. So we went back to sue him for the other songs that you put on that I never got paid for. Ice Ice Baby was never a problem. So the world thinks the Suge hung him over a banister. That shit never happened, that's an urban legend. I was there. So all of that's a lie. Yeah, we definitely gonna talk about the incident between Suge Knight and Vanilla Ice, cause your name always comes up when an incident comes up. 
But I want to go more into detail about the behind the scenes and what was going on behind the scenes and how it came about you working on the album and you writing for him and how difficult it was to get him to rap what you was writing. Take me through all that. Well, my DJ happened to be a dude by the name of DJ Earthquake who also produced 99% of Analyze's album. And um, we were a team. And Earthquake happened to be the DJ for the club that Vanilla Ice manager owned. So with that being said, I used to have to open up for Vanilla Ice. I used to be like, man, why gotta always open up for this dude? He's he's not good. I'm better than him. So I need to he need to open up after me. You know, open up for me. So I did a song called Leave Rap Alone and I dissed him. And his manager, Tommy Kwan, heard the song and felt like, Oh, don't disrespect Robbie. Why don't you work with him? So we became cool. I started hanging out with him. And uh, actually, um, when I did Ice Ice Baby, it was the day that they debuted I Got It Made by Special Ed. I'll never forget that. Special Ed's first single, I Got It Made, came on MTV Raps, and I was at the table and came up with it. He didn't like it to be 100. He did not like Ice Ice Baby. He didn't like it. But you see what happened with it. Yeah. So, he just a liar, bro. Like, he's a liar. He was whack. If, if you listen to Ice Ice Baby very well, you'll hear where he off beat. The best he can do was that. So, you know, I got, I got a, a text message right now on my phone with a cat saying, I remember I was right there the day you did Ice Ice Baby. He's in Texas. He was one of Vanilla Ice's dancers. So he like, you know, come on, man. And, and parts of the parts of Ice Ice Baby was some of the words that I got from D.O.C., the rapper of the D.O.C. So if you listen to that and listen to certain songs of Doc, you could hear little similarities. You know what I mean? So he lies, period. Yeah, so it was that difficult, like being in the studio working with him. Like he he couldn't rap, couldn't stay on beat. It was just awful. Huh? It was just difficult working with him. Huh? Right. He couldn't, he didn't have it. He didn't have it. He just, it's just that, that pocket. He hit that era perfectly. You know what I mean? No white rappers at that time. And he just did it. You know what I mean? But listen to the record. Uh, the world, listen to that song real good. And tell me how many times you hear him off beat. So out of curiosity, man, when you was in the studio with Vanilla Ice, man, um, how long would it take him to record a song? Oh, my goodness. Um... He wasn't bad at it, but long time, long time. Yeah, he, he's gotta remember it's it's hard for you to record a song that you don't write, <laughs> you know. So if you're not writing a song, you gotta learn it as well as record it. But his timing was horrible. <laughs> 